Helvetica and Times New Roman walk into a bar. Get out of here, said the bartender. We don't serve your type. Hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm the idiot on the writer's block. If you're new to the channel, I, the idiot, ask experts for tips on how to write, publish, and promote my first fiction novel. Check here for a link to all my previous videos. And in the description to this video, you'll find links to my first graphic novel, Call 1-800-KILLER-GUY, book one. I am furiously writing book two at the moment. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel for more tips on how to write, publish, and promote your first fiction novel. Now, someone much wittier than me said, dying is easy, comedy is hard. I think it was Oscar Wilde, I don't know. Anyway, they said it. Now, I think I'm funny. Maybe not ha-ha funny, but funny nonetheless. I'm wondering how to convert that type of funny into book type of funny, because there are a lot of funny writers out there. Douglas Adams is one of my favorites, and every time I read his book, I may know the gag, but I'm still gonna laugh every time I read it. Same thing with Ross Grant. Incompetence, mwah, fantastic. How can I do that? How can I write comedy that will stand the test of time, that will make my grandkids and your grandkids and our great-great-grandkids roll around on the floor laughing? In short, I'm throwing the question on the writer's block. How do you do comedy in novels? And here are my experts to answer the question, how do you do comedy in novels? There are, there are, there are rules about comedy. Um, rules are not the right word. That's probably the worst word I could have used. There are ways <clears throat> there are ways to set up a joke and there are things that are funny intrinsically and and one of the biggest things with that is is things being incongruous um which is really helpful if you're writing particularly fantasy comedy because you you can be weird um but the most difficult thing about i think writing a novel that is supposed to be comedic or has a lot of comedy in it is is knowing whether or not it's going to land and i think that you a lot of it has to be about faith um, and belief that you're <laughs> sounds ridiculous, but belief that you're funny. Um, that's not really what I mean, but I mean, is if, if you read something back and it still makes you smile um, when you read it back later, um, and especially months later, do put it aside and look at it again later, then, then you're on the right track. Do get other people's opinions as well about whether or not it's funny. But the main thing that I do is I make sure I put it away, I'll write the joke and I'll go back to it ages later and if it still makes me smile, smile and especially if it makes me laugh, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that I make myself laugh. Um, so if, if only I'm making myself laugh and I'm winning, you've got to be able to believe that you can make other people laugh as well. And the really important thing is that comedy is very subjective. So there are going to be people who do not find it funny. Um, You've just got to believe that you will find the people who do find it funny, um, and and I'm quite a um, I'm quite gentle in my humour. I don't I don't go in for um, shock humour very much or or being particularly offensive. Um, and I've I've found that looking back at like I said, deadheads ten years, looking back at that and reading it, there are occasional bits where I wince a little bit. Um, at some of the things, but it's quite rare actually because, because the humor is quite gentle. Um, and I think that you've got to be mindful of that. There's there's a certain um, element of, of comedy which can be the shock value. And I think that if you're going with that in a novel, then you've got to be prepared for it to, to date really quick um, because it will, it'll, it'll quickly fall out of fashion. But if you're laughing at weirdness of stuff, incongruity of stuff, and ensuring that you've got pathos in there. If you don't have a plot, it doesn't matter how funny you are. If you don't have a plot, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, so making sure that you're funny in a novel, trust your judgment more than anything else. It's funny, cause, I mean, it changes. So uh, for me, it's always about sticky thoughts. You know, a funny thought I have, an interesting thought, an upsetting thought, a, a thought, just something that won't go away. Like this person pissed me off and I can't let it go. Or I've been really upset about this thing and it seems kind of trivial and silly to be upset about. Like any kind of, I kind of follow strong emotions, positive or negative, you know, absolute elation to, to deep depression, to just complete confusion, whatever it is. And I try to put that down on paper. Then I'll come back to it either later that day or sometimes days or weeks later and I flesh it out. Why was I so upset at that guy? Why was I so confused by this process at the post office? Whatever it is. And then from there, I try to cut it down 
and figure out what the bare bones of it is. Because the truth of the matter is, is you need to get to the punchline quickly. So I'm like, what am I trying to say? What can I cut out that people just in, in just know because everybody's been to the post office or everybody has had that kind of confrontation with somebody on the subway? Like, how can I get everything out that is just assumed and just have the absolute limit, like little information as possible to get the funny out. And then from there, anything that is a setup or does have to be said or it could be portrayed as boring, how do I make it funnier? How do I say it in a unique way? So what I did love about Mitch Hedberg is he would, you know, he was a one-liner, but he would take something that we all know and he would sh and he would shift your thought process in the sense that you can never not see it his way again. Escalators can never be broke. They can only become stairs. Sorry for the convenience. We've all walked up escalators and felt inconvenienced, but at the end of the day, you still can get upstairs. And he took something that seemed negative and made it positive. Um, you know, uh, uh, do you think the Pringles company, when they got, you know what I mean, were supposed to get a bunch of tennis balls, but when potatoes showed up, they were a lax company, they're like, come cut them up. And all of a sudden you're like, yeah, why is this cylinder? Why do Pringles? So the same kind of thing with me is like, I had a joke about Xanax, I don't even actually know how the joke goes anymore because it's been over a year how I did it, but I remember performing it in London and my my agent at the time was like, hey, we don't label our drugs. Like you guys rename yeah. them in America. You actually have to tell people what Xanax is. And because she told me I had to explain it, I was like, well, I don't want to be boring for a line. And then I explained it funny. And now it's one of my favorite one-liners is how I explain what Xanax is. And that's not even a part, that wasn't even a part of the joke. That was a note of like, hey, you need to let people know what Xanax is outside of the US because we don't know what it is. Um, so uh, for me, it's, it's a process of ideas, editing, punching up, editing, punching up, editing till it's like boop, boop, boop. And it's just hitting you in the face with jokes. Even if it is a five minute story, there's gonna be at least 10 to 15 jokes in there. I, I, I put the rule of three and the rule of 11 is very important. You either do it for, you either do a joke, you either have that rule of three where, you know, it's, it's it, it, you know, uh, he collected cats, dogs, and hamsters. It's always, always three, either that, or go overboard and just go to like 11, 12, 13, 14, really milk it. Like get that awkwardness until it's funny again. That's always quite fun. But um, stick to the to the rule of uh, set up conflict. Um, and instead of going resolution, which a normal story arc would be, go for misdirection. Go for something like just, just, cause just go, just have some fun with it. Um, but yeah, but the main thing is find your voice. Find your voice by going out there, telling jokes. And the more you tell the same joke, the more you'll tell it in a different way. And then you'll then you'll hear your voice. Then you'll hear how you should be sounding, how 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 jokes will be coming from you from now on. And there you have it. Some pretty funny people telling us how to put comedy in novels. Check in the description for links to their work. And maybe you can help me by putting some of your jokes in the comments below. I'm Marcus. And I'll see you next time. What does a nosy pepper do? Get jalapeno business.